Hello everyone, my name is Ying. I'm one of the team librarians here at Levitan Public Library. We are very honored to have Marim Sharif here today. Marion, uh, what, what do you do as a content? So I do a variety of things. I started in uh, audit and audit essentially is a line within accounting where you look at um, a company's books, their records, and you check to see if everything's aligned, if everything works from a federal perspective in compliance with the laws and regulations. And then at the same time, does it work with our accounting standards? And then, uh -huh, is it work for investors and people who want to invest money into the business? We check to see that there's minimal risk for them and that they're seeing everything that they should before they give money over to whether it's a business, a government, a municipality, etc. cetera. Okay, very good. Okay, could you run us through your typical day? Sure. So I currently am a financial consultant. I used to work within... Uh, in IT space, but now I'm working within an audit space. So what I do is I work for big banking firms, investment firms, and I come in as an accountant. And what I do is I will audit certain areas of their business, take a look at their business process, um, take a look at the industry standards, let them know, is it up to par? Is it not up to par? And then at the same time, where are their gaps and where could there be potential losses if they don't make something efficient or if they don't look at their process and say, is this up to an accounting standard? Are we booking something properly? Are we really tracking our money the best way that we can? And that's where I come in and I take a look at it and I say, yes, no, and here's what you could do. I see. Okay, so what kind of clients do you work with daily? So I've worked for a number of clients. I am, again, like I said, I work primarily in the financial district. I have experience with big banks, um, primarily focused on clients like Goldman Sachs and Citibank. Um, and within, they have a multitude of businesses. They have lines of credit cards. They give out mortgages to people. Um, they have the banking side and then they have the investment side where they'll buy up a lot of land and they'll want to see money come from that. They have global businesses. So we often work with international um, wings in India, China, UK. Um, we've happened to see some areas in Northern Europe as well, and then Australia. That's great. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Okay, so um, would you say this is a job of more working with a team or doing more solo independent work? So it's kind of the best of both worlds. It is definitely team oriented because you can't do this massive amount of work on your on your own. You're going to have to adjust working to different types of personalities on a team, figure out where you fit and figure out what you're best at. And the team will also figure out what everyone else on the team is good at. So when we come into a client and we show them this is what the value we bring, um, Miriam can do this and so and so can do this. So this is where they'll apply us. At the same time, that kind of has an undertone of individuality. You should be able to understand what you're looking at, understand what you're doing, and kind of work in an independence pace. And then at the end of the day, it comes together in a team deliverable. So both, yeah, mm -hmm. some independent work and some yep. team work. Yeah. Okay. So, what are the most important skills for uh, doing well on the work? So your important skills would kind of fit most um, technical type jobs. I would say you need to be more detail oriented and be able to catch things. Um, it's a lot of knowledge to know uh, when you're in accounting. Obviously, the CPA is not those types of exams that you just get overnight. So there's a lot to study. I will say that it's a it's a field where you're constantly learning and growing. So even if you studied something back in 2022, in 2024, certain things might not apply. So it's a it's about constantly learning and kind of pushing yourself forward. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if I answered the question. <laughs> um, there's definitely different types of accountants. I work more client-based in an industry in the corporate space. 
There's a lot of people that work in public accounting. So it's a lot of client work. You're interacting with many different types of people to um, put food on the table and work and, and have a job. Then you'll find that there's other accountants that work in a supporting role where they don't necessarily have to talk to anyone. You can just get financials emailed to you. You sit there, you look at it and you email back. So it really depends on the space that you're working in. But when you are starting out and you're in college and you're working towards being anywhere within its finance, business or accounting, people skills is a must. You have to be able to know how to talk to people, how to have conversations and just be confident in yourself, regardless of if you know what you're talking about or not. I see. Very good. OK, um, so it's a job kind of involves lots of numbers, also problem solving skills and the personal skills. And also you have to be detail oriented and the constant learner. Then you can do well on the work. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. It's a not an easy job. <laughs> <laughs> if you love it, anything can be easy. <laughs> I agree. I totally agree with you. <laughs> so what do you think about the pros and the cons of your work? There's a ton. Uh, it depends on what you go into. I think anyone who goes into accounting wants to aim to get into big accounting firms Anyone who works in finance wants to get into the big finance firms or anything that manages um, money going forward or money from the past. Accountants look at money now. And then from the business side, how do we make money? What can we do to grow the money? And are we making the right decision? So there's many different flavors when you're looking into accounting versus finance versus business. Um, and once you pick one of those, one of the great pros of our field is that it's very fluid. If you have a certain skill set, whether it's accounting, you can find that slowly throughout your career. If you talk to the right people, you can find your way in finance if that's what interests you. Similarly, you can get into business administration from finance. So there's a lot of job jumping. I think the field is very vast. <clears throat> you're not going to find yourself pigeonholed and you're not going to find yourself stuck in a role years down the line where you're miserable because there's always going to be different directions you can go in if you're properly satisfied, if you're properly networked, um, certified, sorry, if you're properly certified and if you're properly networked and you have the right people under your tool belt. That's a great pro to going into accounting because you also have finance and business at your fingertips. Um, one of the cons about the job that you would probably talk to any account is it, it is very time consuming. If you're in the right position and you follow the track the way that you should have, you're going to find that you work a lot longer hours than someone who typically works in other fields that are front office, such as marketing or um, the side of um, like certain other accounting support roles. If you're in the actual accountant, if you work in finance, if you work in business, you're going to need to be available a little, little longer than other people. And at the same time, we have busy seasons. So when the books close on December 31st, it also depends on the company or the government you work for. Once the books close, that's where we come in. We care about complete whole numbers. So you have very busy January, February's and March into April. Similarly, if you work in tax, everyone has their tax filing date. Everyone's rushing to get their taxes in and you're here to file them. So you'll notice that the first quarter of the year, you're very busy. And I think that's one of the cons to it. Another con that I will say is the money doesn't present itself to you right off the bat. If you graduate from your bachelor's and you're looking to transition into a finance business accounting role, depending on most of the roles that you go into, you're not going to be rolling on cash with big paychecks coming in. <clears throat> that's something you have to work your way up to. And at the same time, you have to say, outside of my working hours, do I want to put my time towards studying and becoming certified? EPA, a CFA, a CISA, a CIA, a CMA. There's so many different types of certifications that you can get that will push you further in your career and you'll make money quicker. So pros would be job fluidity, being able to, to find yourself with different and many opportunities. Another pro is, is compared to other fields such as medicine or engineering or law, you're gonna find that the returns come to you a lot sooner. You're gonna be making money a lot quicker than they would and the debt is a lot easier. If you go to a four-year school as opposed to a four-year school and then a fellow in, then a residency or a four-year school and then a law school, 
you'll find that accountants make decent money depending on where they go, or people who work in finance make really good money depending on where, where they go, but it's not going to present yourself right away. So the con is, is be patient <laughs> because the money won't always be there in the beginning. You got to work towards it like any job. And then again, you have to be okay with the hours. A pro to that is, is the longer you work in this career and the more advanced you get and you find yourself with more opportunities, you can find that perfect balance of working a 40 hour work week and having yourself log off at five o'clock in the afternoon and make good money. So there's a, there's definitely some pros and cons in the field. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. How do you get started in the accounting field? So the accounting field, it really depends on one, the school you go to and the programs that they have available to you. Most accredited four-year schools will have a decent accounting program or finance program. Um, I personally went into an accounting program at CUNY Queens College with a minor in economics. So I get to understand the markets and the economy and how the world kind of works in tandem with specific to the American economy. And then at the same time, on a very specific level accounting, I get to chase a dollar and see where it started and where it ends up. That's the basis of accounting. Um, when you come into your four-year degrees, you, you have to take your basic uh, statistics, your calculus, um, and then obviously all of your electives on the side, your social studies and Englishes. Once you get further into your accounting degree in your four-year school, you're going to take more specific accounting courses or finance courses, whether that's cost accounting, audit, accounting information systems, more finance driven courses to kind of track um, forecasting, budgeting, and how companies kind of look at their money and their cash flows. Once you graduate with a degree like that, you're able to then apply to various companies right off the bat. You can go into either public accounting, which is these big corporate firms um, that will take a look at uh, companies and businesses, audit them and turn back to the government or the Security Exchange Commission, which is the SEC and say, yep, this business checks out. It's doing everything that it should according to the law. They're good. Here's a report. Go ahead and read it. Make what it make of it what you will. Or you can go into private, which means you go specifically to a company like Google or Amazon or an insurance company or a small mom and pop deli in the corner and say, hey, I'm really good with numbers. I can take a look at your books and I can make sure that all of your cash that comes in at the end of the day, it's accounted for and it goes somewhere secure. That way you know exactly what bills you can pay, what you can spend on for the following month and what your inventories will look like. So there's a vast amount of things that you can do once you get yourself an accounting degree, but the first step is first is to major in something in that field and, and chase it throughout and make sure you're taking the right courses. My biggest advice is to talk to guidance counselors and talk to people, what can I do with an accounting degree? And the answer is a lot. You can do a lot with an accounting degree. That's true, yeah, a lot. Many possibilities yeah, mm -hmm. in this field. So having a CPA uh, license, it's like having another academic degree. What's the additional value of becoming a CPA after earning the accounting degree? Yep. So you're going to find when you work in the accounting field that there's a huge handful of people that don't have their CPAs and they make, you know, just as much as you do or they work within the same similar roles. The difference between having your CPA license is it puts you apart from the crowd. If you're able to study and, and knock out those exams and get all of the licensure um, requirements, which is your college degree, which is 150 credits, and then all four CPA part exams. Again, the exam parts do differ depending on the certification you go for, because a CPA is a certified public accountant. If you want to become a CFA, which is a certified financial accountant, or a CISA, which is a certified information systems accountant, the exams will differ and the timelines will differ. The vigor and the difficulty will also differ, but your run of the mill, typical certification that really sets you apart at the end of the day will be a CPA. If you can grab yourself a CPA degree, someone's gonna look at you and look at someone else when they're hiring someone for a job and say, well, she has her CPA and the other person doesn't, although they do have a master's degree, but we prefer CPAs. Master's degrees are great. I recommend you go and you get them as well. 
I do not have my master's degree. I, t I opted to get my CPA because I know that businesses and public accounting firms and government and law regulation bodies prefer CPAs and they do look at masters as well. If you do both, do both, I highly recommend it. But CPAs will set you apart from other applicants. It'll set you apart from people who are looking for get, to get promotions. It'll set you apart in conversations. When people talk to you and they talk to you as an accountant, it's great benefit for them. But if they're talking to you and you're a CPA, they're going to take your advice a little more seriously. And they're going to look at you and say, she knows what she's talking about because she's licensed with, with whatever state right. you're in. Right. It's a kind of expert, expert. Exactly. Yes. Great additional value there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So after uh, you got the CPA license, like, do you need to get continuing education credits to maintain your certificate? Yep. So there's continuing credits that you need to get once you become a CPA. Obviously, the CPAs can do a lot of things. You can even open up your own business and become a CPA within a business. The business will not continue to run if you're not renewing the credits you need to be constantly learning to be a CPA. Every You renew it every single year. But when we say renew, it's not like a teaching education degree where you have to actually renew your license. If you're a CPA, you have to take little credits throughout the year. And each credit has, similar to college degrees, a certain number that's attributed to that. Companies offer CPE accredited courses, colleges do, or you could just attend lectures across the nation and they'll give you a little piece of paper and they'll say, you sat down for a lecture, it was accounting, finance, business, or economics related, it should go towards your CPA accreditation for the year. You rack up these numbers at the end of the year, you send them into your state boards and you say, listen, I completed X amount of courses which yielded an excellent amount of number, which hit our bottom baseline, I can be a CPA in the next year. Could you uh, let us like, know again how to become a CPA? Sure. So to become a CPA, there's a couple of things that you're going to need. Um, obviously, uh, it would be an accounting degree or a finance degree or business degree. There are certain credits that you must get in college to be able to qualify to even sit for the CPA. You have to apply to sit for an exam. They'll reject you based off of the credits that you have if you don't have the proper accounting courses, if you don't have courses within the business realm, if you don't have courses within the finance realm, if you don't have courses within the economics realm, and if you don't have courses within the finance realm. And then at the same time, you can take whatever courses you want to fill the rest of them. I believe off the top of my head, it's about 36 to 38 credits for the business side and then 36 to 38 credits for the accounting side. That is specific to New York. It does differ from state to state. But for New York, um, that's what you need to sit for the licensing. I believe off the top of my head, it's pretty standard for other states, but do check your state boards to see what the requirements are to sit for certain exams. Once you get those credits, you can sit for a CPA exam. They'll take a look at your resume. You apply as if you're applying to a job. You send in your college credits. You send in um, some letters. They'll review your application and they'll send you a notice to sit, which is an NTS. Once you have the NTS in your hand, you can say, okay, they approved me to go sit. You register for any one of the exams. These CPA exams consist of four exams. There's the financial part. There's the audit part. There is the business part. And then there is the tax part. So these four parts of the CPA exam um, basically are covered in college. These four parts, if you are an accounting, if you get an accounting degree, will be familiar to you. They're a lot more extensively covered on the CPA exam. They're not college level exams. They're very difficult. Um, so you'll have exposure to the knowledge of what goes on a CPA exam. But once you start to study for the CPA exam, you'll realize it's a completely different beast. So once you get your notice to sit, you can take them in any order you want, whichever you know, one you're comfortable with. You would do something similar as if you were sitting for an MCAT if you wanted to become a doctor. You would get a review online course. You would sit for the lectures either after your job or during your senior year of college if you've already qualified at that point, which would be a great idea to do so. And study as if you're studying for any exam. You take practice exams, you take notes, you sit through lectures, and then you go and you sit for your exam. Each exam you have to pass with at least a 75. 
Uh, you will find it is difficult to get that 75. A lot of people celebrate when they get a 76. It is an accomplishment regardless. You don't have to aim to be a 95 or 100 student. Um, although side note, there are people who do get above a 98 on each exam and um, they get scholarly awards and recognized by um, the state, which is a huge accomplishment. And there's not that many people on that list. <laughs> so if you can make it, that's a great um, accomplishment and something to put on your resume as well. But at the end of the day, if you pass everything with either 75 or above, you then have four passing scores. You're not a CPA yet. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that your college credits add up to 150. If they're not 150, off the top of my head, I do believe a lot of colleges you graduate with 135 or 130 credits or something like that. You need 150 credits. That's at least a couple of extra semesters and or a master's degree. So once you have 150 credits and you have all four parts of the CPA exam, you send that to your state board, they'll review it for a couple of months, and then they'll either say, everything looks great, or no, you're missing some things, we want you to do X, Y, Z. Then uh, they mail you back your CPA license, and you can officially start practicing as a certified public accountant within that state. Wow, it takes lots of work. Yeah. <laughs> a <laughs> long time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Great. Thank you for your information. Yeah. No, okay, definitely. So my next question is, how did technology change this field? Immensely. So you'll notice that a lot of CPAs back in the day do everything by hand. Um, it's doing a lot of line drawing and then drawing all the numbers in and then tracking the books on paper. If you want to become successful in the future, paper is not the way to go. It's great to take notes by hand. It's great to have a company's books on hands. But if you're walking into a mom and pop deli shop and their books are about this thick and they have hundreds upon thousands of receipts that you need to sit there and write in, it's just not efficient. You're going to be there for a very long time getting paid the same amount of money if it was just logged into a system. So that's where accounting information systems come in. It's a massive field, it's a growing field, it's a great place to be. They're starting to mesh a lot of IT functions and accounting. Um, if you guys are in going into the IT field, accounting is a great side gig. I think a lot of accounting and finance are looking to the people in the IT field to say, hey, can you build out a system for, you, for me or program for me to help me track this, these businesses numbers. At the same time, I'm calculating everything by hand. What if I just wrote out a program to do the calculations for me? Technology has come a massive amount of ways. Um, in the companies that I've worked for, for example, big investment back banks like Goldman Sachs and Citibank, they don't do anything by hand. You're not gonna find paper, a paper trail. You're going to find a digital footprint. So anything and everything that's sent to me is either through an Excel file or a PDF. I highly, highly recommend investing and taking courses in accounting information systems, learning how everything is done digitally, take some computer science courses. It's really useful in the field of finance, accounting, and business. A lot of businesses are tech driven. If you wanna be relevant in conversations and you wanna be able to talk to people on the business side, you should understand systems. You can look at your clients and say, hey, by the way, I understand you're doing X, Y, and Z by hand. As an accountant, here's where I bring value because I can tell you, you don't have to do it by hand. Everything can just be put into a system and press save. And then in the future, when I come back in and I'm doing your taxes for you, I can just download it. So there's a lot of things, we call it automating, They'll take care of a lot of functions for you. Massive growing field. AI is also being integrated into our field as well. We're constantly digitally upskilling ourselves as accountants. So we're doing multiple different things outside of accountant accounting. Um, for example, I've learned basic coding. I understand SQL and JavaScript and C++. Um, I've tried my hand at Python. I'm horrible at coding. But at the end of the day, I can still have the conversations around people's systems, their programs, their databases, and Amazon AWS and Google Cloud software is being integrated into your businesses as well. It's just going to make you that much more relevant in your field. If not only are you a CPA, but you're able to look at all of the emerging technologies that's going to affect companies' financials. 
So you're going to be able to be at that desk having that conversation just alongside of someone who worked in IT who works within the cloud space. Yeah. Actually, that leads my uh, next question. Nowadays, you know, uh, AIs can handle many basic accounting tasks like more efficiently and without any human mistakes. So do you think AI will replace many functions of the accountant in the future? That's a great question. So absolutely not. Um, accounting in finance and business are one of the few fields that you won't ever find a computer taking your job. Um, there's something in the accounting field that we call um, accounting judgment, or we use our judgment. So essentially, human brains have to come in and look at something and say, this is a good business decision. A computer won't be able to tell you that. A computer can calculate where your numbers might be in the year 2030, but an accountant's going to tell you, if you make this business decision, this is what's going to happen along the way to certain areas of your business if you decide to do that. And I think that's the invaluable part, the actual human touch of this is how you run a business. It takes humans to start businesses. It takes humans to run businesses. And a part of those humans are accountants. So computers help us tremendously. I think they do eliminate a lot of the mundane tasks that accountants and finance people have to do. Um, computers are more of our friends in this field and less our enemies or our competition. Um, if you can learn uh, how to work with computers, you're gonna be that much better at your job. Big pro to the field. Yeah. Yep. So AI is a great tool, but it cannot replace a content. Yeah. Okay. Nope. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my last question is what advice would you give teens like who are interested in this field based on your own experience? I think that in the beginning, uh, as a teenager or someone in college, it's very difficult to kind of picture yourself in five years and picture what it is you want to do with your life. It's about, you know, exploring yourself, having fun, hanging out with your friends. I will, my biggest advice to you is start investing in yourself now. If you can start and find yourself little hobbies and little things that you enjoy to, to do that are math oriented or things that are tech oriented, or you like the idea of finance, or you see the movie like Wolf on Wall Street, and you say, you know what, I want to do that one day, I want to put on a suit, and I want to talk big, you can do it. It's, it's not that far away from you that you can't. It's actually not that difficult to get there if you're a hard worker, and if you dedicate yourself, and if you study hard. I think it's right there, and a lot of people get there, and a lot of people love what they do. So my biggest advice is to really sit down Sit down with your parents, sit down with a guidance counselor, sit down with professionals in the field, sit down with an aunt, uncle or a family friend who works in the field and say, hey, how did you get there? What did you do? Um, can you look at what I'm doing right now? Do you think I can you know, get there? And 10 times out of 10, it's yes, you can get there. You can definitely do it. Um, but biggest advice is once you get to college, even for the first year or two, if you don't know what it is you want to do, just take an accounting class over the summer. Just take a finance class or a business class. Take one course. It's not going to kill you. See if you like it. You might just hate it or you might just love it. <laughs> so uh, you'll never know what you want to do unless you try. And that goes for any field, whether it's IT, medicine, business, accounting, X, Y, Z in the third. I see. So it's better dream big, work harder try more things, yep. and you'll find your way. 100%. Very good. Well, it's awesome. Mariam, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed this interview. Yep. No, I so appreciate thank it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So if anyone has questions uh, they want to ask Mariam and ask the team department, feel free to email any questions at the teams at levitonpl.org. And we'll answer your questions. Thank you. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you.